Greetings once again. Welcome to Flamenco Dance Lesson number whatever for today, uh, June 11th, 2020. Here in Tucson, Arizona, I'm Jason Martinez. Thank you to all of you who have supported me and kept me uh, able to pay for the studio rental to be able to continue to do these. Um, you're very generous and this is possible because you're so generous. Um, those of you who would like to contribute to these classes, if you benefited from them previously or you like what you see after today, uh, you can go to the link in the description of this video and there will be uh, the website for uh, the class contribution page. $7 if you prefer or more, it's up to you. Obviously it's not compulsory and anything that you can uh, contribute is much appreciated. Um, we did a little, if you recall, a little uh, survey. And if you haven't done that, that's also in the description. It's a survey just asking students what they want to see in these classes. Uh, so far, pretty, uh, pretty uh, convincingly, people have voted in favor of um, improvisation communication lessons. So we started doing that last week. This week, we're going to do it again. I promised you that I would work on at least being able to sing a letra populeria uh, so that we could work with that. If you recall, what I said was that you can't do flamenco without cante. Cante is where it all comes from. The guitar is a wonderful instrument. You can do a solo. You can do, you can do flamenco, baile, uh, all the aesthetic, but without the cante, we don't have a reference point. So guitar always is referring back to cante. Baile is always referring back to cante. Compass itself is there to set up and float Kante and make it stronger. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to do a little warm up as we usually do today. Um, oh, before I get going, the uh, the letra por bulería, the, the verse of bulería that we're going to see today is also in the description. So if, while I'm singing it, you can follow along the words. And I'm going to do it to compass and I'll do my best, I'm not a singer as I mentioned. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's start with just a little uh, quadricep stretch here. Standing up nice and tall, lengthening the spine, pushing your left hook forward even as you pull back here, and really just open up this area here in the inside of the quadricep. And then switch. As I've mentioned before, if you have uh, trouble with this because of the balance, you can always hold on to something. It doesn't negate the benefits of the stretch. Okay. Let's just warm up our muscles. This is not really a stretch, but it's just a little exercise. Let's just squat down a little bit and come back up. Just reach back. Make sure you make sure if you see my if you see me in the mirror, I'm gonna try to position myself correctly. Notice how my, my uh, knees don't come way over my, my toes. Rather, it's like there's a bench back here that I'm trying to sit on. So we're just coming down a little bit. Let's get some blood pumping into the quadriceps. Sometimes it's good to do this kind of stuff to tire out those muscles because although the quadricep muscles are necessary for you to be able to do this kind of stuff, or to even stand up, obviously, um, we rely on them too heavily. We don't rely on alignment of our skeleton and other smaller muscle groups to help us do the different uh, positionings and uh, our footwork. We're not using our weight and gravity because we're just pushing with these uh, larger muscle groups. And sometimes that's not good, especially as you get further on into a, a body or a solo and you start tiring out. It's the worst feeling to be up in front of people on a stage and your, your legs are dead. I bet you some of you know what that feels like. So now that we got that going, it's knees up to the, to the hands here. Continue to get our heart pounding a little bit, racing a little bit, blood flowing. Try to get in position so you can see 
There we go. So let's do that little uh, uh, inward rotation exercise we've been doing. So you're going to have the arms up here. First thing you're going to do is shoulder blades down, then elbows point up without the shoulders riding up, and then finally hands turn out. And then reverse that, hands back to how they were. Let the elbows droop, but don't let go of this part. And finally relax. Arms up, shoulder blades down. Elbows trying to point up, hands flip. Hold it for a second. Hold on to your midsection. Flip the hands, release the elbows, and then release the shoulder blades. Let's do it a couple more times. Arms up, shoulder blades down, elbows up, finally flip the hands. And then reversing that, flip the hands, keep the shoulder blades down even as you let the elbows go, and then finally let it all go. One more time. Up, shoulder blades down, elbows pointed up or back, flip the hands. Flip the hands, elbows release, shoulder blades release. Good. Big arm circles backward, open the chest. As you reach forward, go ahead and hunch here, chin to the chest, and as you go back, look up, open up the upper body, and then. So try to start this movement from the torso. The torso opens, my arms go back. The torso closes, my arms come forward. Chin goes to the chest, then chin goes up. Now let's reverse that. So we're going to go, I'm sorry, uh, down, then up. Curve the spine, open the chest. Don't forget to hold on to your lower abdominals. Very strong core is a big, big part of flamenco. Bind me. All right. Very good. Okay. Let's, uh, let's just warm up our spine a little bit. We're going to do this little ball change exercise. We're going to go right, left, left, right. Just let the, let the upper body go further than the hips. And make sure you hold on to your lower abdominals once again. If I weren't holding on to my lower abdominals now and I really threw my weight around, I could kind of over twist my spine maybe more than it's ready to. And that wouldn't be good. So we're just taking it easy at first, but do let your shoulders continue on further than your hips. Now let's go ahead and put a high uh, middle seventh into that seventh position, back and forth. Now you're cornering your focus, but since I'm essentially bringing my shoulders to my focus forward, I don't really have to move my head. If I were being more shallow, then I would take my focus left or right. But essentially I'm bringing my body to my focus instead of the other way around right now. All right, here's a little turn exercise. Quarter, we're gonna do quarter and half turns. And this is a preparation to get, get you to be able to do vueltas flamencas. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna do a seven position here. I'm gonna look over my left. Now, I'm gonna lift my right foot in a second. What I'm going to do if I do it in slow motion, is I'm gonna lift my foot, twist my hips and my body, and put the foot down and end here. Then I'm gonna do the whole thing all over again. Notice I'm only going a quarter of the way around. Okay? So, the trick is, if I start here, looking over my left shoulder, I want to end back over that left shoulder. So what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm opening up the body, twisting the hips. I'm sorry, if I start left, I end over my right. And then to prepare again, I go back to my left. So I, I focus left, close right. Focus left, close right. Focus left, close right. Focus left, 
close right. Then let's reverse that. Start here, focus right, close left. Focus right, close left. Focus right, close left. Focus right, close left. Let's try both directions again. Then we'll go to half turns. Starting here again. Focusing left and right. Focus left. The sharper, the more stark, the better. Try to make it happen as though it's one action. Other direction, we're gonna start here. B. Hold on to your midsection. That'll definitely help me around. If I don't hold on to my midsection, my upper body and lower body are disconnected, and so I can't close uh, on a dime the way I've been doing. But if I hold on, bam, I'm there. Let's do each side one more time, then we'll go to half turns. Start, cornered left and right. Corner left and right. Corner left and right. Corner left and right. Start right, close left. Right, left. Right, left, right, left. Feel a little bit like a soldier when you do that. Standing at attention, right? Okay, so now we're gonna do half turn. So I better take my glasses off for this one. So what we're gonna do, same exact thing, but now I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna take two rotations to get all the way around. So I start here, and I'm gonna close right, but I wanna be here after the first one. And then I'm gonna start here to get back to where I started. Okay? So if I do it slow again, it's here. Then here. B. Then the other direction. Uh, start here. B. And there. So let's do a couple times one direction, a couple in the other. So we'll go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, switch. One, uh, I'm sorry. Here, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Other direction. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Staying here, going that direction. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Shake it out. I hold a lot of tension here when I do that. Ideally, my back would be taking most of that tension, most of that work. Probably wasn't putting my shoulder blades down as, and engaging as much as I needed to and concentrating on relaxing these, the delts here in the front. But we're all learning, right? Even the teacher, always learning. That's why we always goes back to these basics, basic ideas because you can never get good enough at these uh, in terms of having mastery. Some people just pull it right out, man. They have it in their bodies. And that's what we're always working toward. Some things you'll be able to achieve that with. Some things you'll work all your life and, and maybe not get it exactly. But as I always mentioned, you can get better today than you used to be at any given thing. And it's not about perfection anyway. So enjoy yourself like I'm enjoying being with you right now. Okay, so we did all that. Let's do some footwork stuff, okay? This is a good uh, step because it teaches you to initiate with the tacon. So, facing you first, we're just gonna go. Okay, that's the idea, so what am I doing? I'm putting the planta, you don't even have to put the planta down, you can just go. That is ta, 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 planta, right? And then I'm positioned here because my planta's up. So let's keep it open at first and then we're gonna tighten it as we go, so. If I'm facing forward here, try to get in the position here. I'm going to go. Heel, jab, heel, planta. Heel, jab, heel, planta. OK. 
Okay, so we're going to keep the same step, but now we're going to move the planta in different directions. So the second variation we'll do back behind us here, and then we'll come back in on the same foot. So I go. Right heel, right heel. So the heel initiates. And the last one will go out in front. Okay? Let's try to a tango's rhythm. Oops. Tango's rhythm, as I was saying. Try to keep it a little slow. of sounds in particular, but also just to have strength to keep, keep it moving. To be able to, uh, to uh, initiate a step with the heel means you can come in on time and with strength, okay? Uh, now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna condense it, so as opposed to going, we're gonna hold it a little bit and go. All right, they're gonna die to the floor. So you can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different uh, ways you can condense that. This is what we're shooting for. So if I'm here on this is open, they condense. Now open. Condensed. Dance. 
going great. Keep going. Woo! So it's a great exercise, very simple. Uh, we got a little bit of time, so let's put arms to it. So we're going to go. We're starting here in place. We'll just keep it here. That's variation one. Variation two, whatever leg goes out, that's the leg that, that's the arm that's coming forward. So we're gonna go. Back to base, back to base, then. All right, and finally forward, opposition. Forward one isn't great, but I think you get the idea. In place, five, six, seven. Dance. So as you recall, last week we did this little step. It goes 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All you're doing is shifting heels, toes, heels, then stepping out and through. To the mirror, I'm going 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? Again. Twelve, one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A couple more times. Twelve, one, two, three, four. Six, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! One more time. Twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, simple step, effective step, marks. One, two, four, six, eight, ten. All very nice places, major accents within a bulleria compas of 12, right? 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, we're gonna do a letra today that's common, it's fairly easy. If I can even get close to singing, and it must be easy, because I can't sing, uh, but I'm going to give it a shot, as I said. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to we're going to test this little step, meaning we're going to insert it different places in the letra. 
And we're going to find out if it feels weird to put it in this place or if it feels good to put it in this place. Okay? So if you look, if you want to follow along with this letra, the lyrics are, and it's in the description, Ay pobrecita de mi madre, 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 que le, que le han robado, robado la azotea, su velacho de lunares. Ay pobrecita de mi madre, que la han robado de la azotea, su velacho de lunares. Okay? Sung very slowly, just a compas now. I'll do my best to belt it. Bear with me. Let's put it about here. So you gotta have a good sense of your sixes right off the bat. This is sixes. Boom. Now, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah? You start singing after the 12. So it goes. Ay, pobrecita de mi madre. Rest for 12. Repeat. Ay, pobrecita de mi madre. Que la han robado de la azotea. Sube el ancho de tu lunare. Que la han robado de la azotea. Sube el ancho de tu lunare. So that's the letra we're working with. I say the first line, there's a little 12 count breath. I say the first line again. Then I say the next two lines, which go, which opens and closes, rises and falls, and then I sing those same two lines again, rises and falls again. So if you're familiar with the letra and the melody, or my best crack at the melody, you, will, uh, you can predict or know what's coming next and then you can understand where your steps would, would fit well. Uh, it'll take some practice, but pretty soon you'll be able to react. Get the step in your body, and then apply based on what you hear, okay? So let's try a couple of different things. Let's try compas by compas, putting that initial step in, okay? I'm going to do it right away on the first line of, of Cante. La pobrecita de mi madre. That was bad. Let's try again. La pobrecita de mi madre. Ay, 
Pobrecita de mi madre. Pobrecita de mi madre. En la roba de la azotea. Sube el macho de luz. Roba de la azotea. Sube el macho de luz. I missed it the first time, but I tried it the second time. Didn't feel right in that place. The first line of the second section, doesn't necessarily feel good there unless I keep going and doing something else. But look, look what happens when we put it on the very last line. Sube el ancho de lunares. Ay, pobrecita de mi madre. Pobrecita de mi madre, que la roba de la azotea, sube la chodera, que la roba de la azotea, sube la chodera, so let's see how you finish, that little step fits good with the very last line, or the caída, or the so if we go, que la roba de la azotea, sube el hacho de lunare. That's where that little step feels good. It's a resolve, right? So in the respiro, it's filling in space. It functions that way. In the, with the caída, where the letra goes, goes back down the base, um, it matches, it, 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 uh, it completes. It resolves, there's a good word, it resolves with that last line, okay? So generally speaking, a one compas little pasito like this one goes good into the respiro where there's a breath between the, the, the first line and then the repeat of the first line and it, with the caída. So keep that in mind, okay? Um, now, what if we tack on uh, that little... Um, Marking step, the bulerias de calle step, which is this. So we go 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you just keep that step going. Let's see what happens uh, when we continue. Because after you do a step like this, and then, a, and then a step that's dense, it keeps the energy flowing. It's very different than doing a resolve and then just marking and holding. Both are valid, but they both have different effects on uh, how you're expressing what's happening in the cante. There's no exact right answer, but there are some things that are better than others, generally speaking, normally. Okay. I go with the first line and then I keep marking. Pobrecita de mi madre. Pobrecita de mi madre. Que la robó de la sopeña. Sube la sopeña. Ok. So that little step keeps the energy going of the, of, the, of the step that I just did before. So when I went pa, pa, pi, boom, boom, pa, this keeps it going, right? But if you're doing this the entire time over a letra of cante, you will lose dynamic. It can only go so far. It can only keep the energy going so far before it becomes redundant, okay? So we want to have a place where we can stop doing that step and do something else, okay? Does it have to be more complex? Not necessarily. So let's see what it's like now when we do this, the, the pasito in the respiro, which is that line of breath between the, first, the singing of the first line. You sing the first line, respiro, first line again. We're gonna do this in there. Then we're gonna keep going with the, with the bolerias de cari step after that. Si 
Because you know that I'm going to sing those last two lines again, right? Because we went over that. Que la roba de la azotea, o su el ocho de lunares. Que la roba de la azotea, o su el ocho de lunares. I'm going to do it again. So even though I've been doing this step for a while, it seems logical that the place you'd want to stop doing that step and move on to something else is that first caída. Because now I can match up whatever I want to do next with the uh, with the caída because I know it's coming, right? If I had a basic, if I had a basic step like that, that would fit two compases perfectly with that that uh, last the last two lines. So see how I resolve with it. So hopefully you're getting what I'm trying to what I'm trying to throw down, which is to say, get the steps in your body, understand and remember what a melody of a, of a simple letra like this one is, then try inserting those simple steps in. Okay. Doesn't mean you have to be constantly moving or constantly doing something. For example, we're going to do the respiro because it fits nicely. So I'm going to go. I put the cita de mi mare. something, and it's also my way of getting into the, the, the my uh, Gloria Espatada, bam, bam, e, bam, bam, ah, then relax. Then you have another opportunity to come in again, and I don't have to, I don't have to move around. Sometimes moving around, doing stuff, is just a result of us being uncomfortable and just wanting to rush into something. We gotta, we gotta fight that by relaxing, right? So again, what does relaxing look like? I put the seat on the mare. something else in there but one step one step I used it in the beginning one step I used it at the end you just got to place it strategically okay so uh, let's see we should incorporate today what we call a uh, recoge recoge is to collect so the reason they call it recoge is I'm taking three steps back feet together at the end, and I'm bringing my arms in, like I'm gathering something here. Da, da, da. Now, you, most of you probably know who are taking this class, what a desplante populeria is, okay? I'm not gonna go over that today. Uh, if I have videos on my channel that detail the simplest types of desplante populeria that there are. So if you go to my bullerias, 
uh, playlist, it's in there, and you can learn a, a desplante. But a recoge is the three steps to prepare for the desplante. A desplante is two compas, which is very convenient because a lot of these uh, a lot of these letras have a rise for one compas and a fall for two compas. Que la de la azotea for 12, sube el hacho de lunares for 12. So the first time I hear it, que la de la azotea, sube el hacho de lunares. That's a good place to do a recoque, because what comes next? I'm doing a desplante next. A desplante is how many compas? Two compas. How many compas is that repeat of the, the line, the last part of the letter I just did? Two compas. A desplante opens and a desplante closes. So the open is here. The close, right? Just like the letra, opens, closes, okay? So we're gonna put in a recoge and a desplante. The recoge we're gonna put the first time the caída happens. Sube el hacho de lunares. Then we're gonna do the desplante over. And then we're gonna put the desplante over the last part. Let's try it all together. So now I'm going to give you kind of a choreography, but it's only because it fits well with the cante, not because I'm giving you something to perform tomorrow. Rather, I'm giving you steps that we're thinking about placing strategically and with sensibility musically, and then you're going to apply that, okay? And I've already demonstrated that there's many places and different ways you can do that. So let's put this little choreography together. We're going to do our first pasito in the respiro after the first line of letter. Ay, pobrecita de mi madre. Pobrecita de mi madre. En la bomba de la azotea. Sube el ancho de la luna. See what I mean? How this, this stuff, you get this into your body and it just fits nicely, okay? I'm going to do the same thing again, but I'm going to face the mirror for those of you who are still working through trying to get the steps, okay? The idea was placing things where they go. Notice I did my desplante when? After the cante was all the way done. And then it kept the energy of the last line going, right? Let's try it again, but I'll do it properly this time. I'm gonna to try to put the desplante over the last two lines of letra, okay? Is the, is the goal. Hopefully I do it this time. Pobrecita de mi madre, pobrecita de 
pobrecita de mi madre, y la ropa de la soltería, su berracho de lugar. La ropa de la soltería, su berracho de lugar. That's what I meant to do. So, review that little, let's, let's get it in here, even as we're getting it in here. First line, do nothing, listen. Pobrecita de mi madre. Second line, singer takes a breath. That's where we put our little step in, yeah? It's like an, it's as though the singer sang a first letra as an invitation, like singing your name, like you. Come dance. Here's the first line, and they gave it to you. Then you respond. You give your little, your little response back to them. And then you give the respect to let them continue to sing and well up anything that it is that they want to get out and sing to you. It is respect, by the way. Not trampling over cante is respect. So that they, they sing the first line again. This time you're just taking it easy. Pobrecita de mi madre. Then, the next two lines, which are going to be repeated twice. Que la droga de la sotella sube el hacho de lunare. So, I went from doing nothing to little, little marking for that first line of the, of the last two lines, right? Que la droga de la sotella Right? I reflected what was happening in the cante. They went down, the caída. I stepped back to recollect myself. What I just did in addition to uh, reflecting the cante visually, as I just told everybody that's doing palmas and the guitarist, I'm about to do something. And they know that this means... I'm up in all likelihood, I'm going to do this flante. Okay? And then finally, <laughs> and I finished with them. So, see, it's not that difficult if you think of it as a language, you think of it as a back and forth conversation. Okay? Let's try that. Let me do that. Let me do the uh, the. Uh, let's just get the mechanics of the of the choreography, real quick, and then I'll sing to it. But we're gonna do it without. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pod master 12, 12, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, then step. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hold. This is the repeat of the first line. Que la robao de la sotella sube el hacho de lunares. I'm sorry, sube el hacho de lunares. Recoge. Desplante. They're just repeating what they just sang. And then you do the desplante over it, okay? Those are the mechanics. Get that in your body. Now I'm going to do with compas, but without singing, and then I'm going to sing, and you're going to see how it matches up. First line.
How do we do? We make it a little bit more sense than it used to? Hopefully. Now what we talked about today, we're going to apply to other palos. And it does apply to every palo. You have little steps placed properly that make sense of the music. You come off looking great. The musicians come off looking great. And you have fun because you've understood and they've understood you. And you're speaking and having a good conversation. So tangos, all the same elements. We can have a little paso. We can have a marking, a couple different kinds of marking just to mix it up. There's such a thing as a recoge in uh, tangos as well, and then the desplante, which is two compas. It all fits. Solea pulgaria, alegrías, seguiría. Uh, even solea is something much, much slower. These, these same principles all apply. Um, next week, let's try tangos. How about that? Okay? So I'm going to show you. We're going to talk, we're going to use the same language, the same tools. And we're going to learn a new letra that's probably old to you, but maybe you never heard of it. We'll do some easy letra like Triana. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how we can use one step effectively in a little pata, patada, portamos, okay? So uh, this week, practice this over and over. Get the, get the step in your body over and over. But on your, your uh, uh, drum machine or your, your your Compass app, Dr. Compass is the one I recommend. Uh, it, you have to pay for it, but it's well worth it. It, it. it doesn't just give you like clack, 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 like a metronome, but it, as you can hear, it has palmas, it has cajon. You can take the tempo up and down. You can take the cajon out. There's all kinds of things you can do with it, so I highly recommend that. Um, use your Compass machine, your drum machine, whatever it is, your apps, and get the mechanics of the, each step. That way you have it to use at any time. And then, uh, those of you who are inclined to sing, watch this video, get the gen general melody. I know I'm not a good singer, but uh, I'm in the ballpark when it comes to this letra. <laughs> I'll say that much. I can't pat myself on the back too much more than that. Um, see if you can learn how to sing a little bit. Find other tracks, type in that, that letter onto Google and see if it comes up somewhere with a track so you can hear how, how other singers sing it. There's a lot of different ways singers can sing it. Actually, that particular letter, Miguel Polvera, has a bullet in one of his earlier CDs that has that in there. So you can use that one. That would be a good place to start. And it has a bunch of other really good usable letras that if you learn the melody, you memorize it, you'll be able to take these tools that we've been developing in, in and apply it. I hope that was useful to you. It was fun for me. You all stay safe, stay healthy. Um, love your brother and sister. God bless.